All right, welcome back to the second lesson for uh, Unit 7, and we are going to continue to solve linear systems. Um, last time we solved uh, the linear system by graphing, and today we're going to do an, a use an algebraic method, and this is called uh, solving the system by substitution. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But first, there are two review questions for you to do, and why don't you give it a try, and I'll show you the solution in a bit. Okay. All right, so here are the solutions. Um, hopefully you got them right. Also, I hope that you um, notice something for part B here. Notice how I got a solution to be 3 comma negative 2. However, when I was doing it, I noticed that that was not one of the points that I actually plotted. So I'm just actually guesstimating here, right? I'm kind of, yeah, I think that's the answer. You know, so I, think, so I picked that as my solution and I actually plugged those two numbers into my original equation to check if they are right. Indeed, they turn, that turned out to be the solution. But you see, when we are solving by graphing, sometimes, you know, that could happen. Or even like this could happen. Then how do I know, you know, what, how, what exactly they are, right? I'm just really just estimating. I'm just guessing. So solving by graphing is nice because we can see what is happening usual, uh, visually. But um, sometimes we just need some sort of algebraic method so we can actually pinpoint exactly where it is, like that situation. okay? Or in this situation too as well, actually. So today I'm going to show you uh, a, a method. It's called a substitution method. okay? It's a substitution method. Now there are four steps here and I will show you how to do it, okay? So here it says, first step, solve one of the equations for a single variable. Okay, so you can see here is our system. We can solve one of the equations for a variable, okay? So in this case, this one would be the, the one to use because um, the coefficient for y is negative one. And we are, we are trying to, so step one essentially is saying, isolate for a variable for one of the equations, okay? So if you want to isolate for one of the variables, the one to pick would be the ones that has a coefficient of positive one or negative one. Okay, so if you, anyways, if you want to isolate for y here, you would first move 3x to the right, so by subtracting it, and then you then divide everything by negative one, then you get y equals 3x minus one. Okay, I simply um, solve for y here. Okay, so I move the 3x to the right and then divide everything by negative 1 to get positive y. First step is done. Second step is I substitute the equation from step 1 into the other equation and solve that equation. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in here. Okay, now where am I going to put it to? Well, let me write down the second equation first. Now it's negative 6x plus 3y. Now instead of writing a y, I'm going to actually put this equation in there instead, okay? So you can see y equals 3x minus 1. So here, instead of y, I'm going to put 3x minus 1 in there instead, okay? Notice how I substitute the expression 3x minus 1 into y, because that's what we said y equals to, okay? Now, this is one equation with one variable in which we can solve, okay? So I can expand this. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 equals negative 8. I forgot the x here. Negative 6x plus 9x is 3x. Moving the 3 to the right, by adding 3, you get negative 5. Sorry, wasn't sure. Okay, divided by 3 here, we got negative 5 over 3 as our x value. Okay, now that's the second step. Third step, we can solve for y, because remember, in the solution, you have an x value and a y value, right? So that's what you should have as a solution. So here, we only have x. How do we solve for y? Well, it says substitute the solved variable into one of the original equations. Now, we don't actually have to solve uh, or substitute back into the original equation. We can actually put it into that equation. And it is nice because y is already isolated for us. So it is actually nicer to put it in here instead. 3 times negative 5 over 3 is negative 5, minus 1, and that gives us negative 6. So y equals negative 6. You might ask, how did you get negative 5 here? You go 3 is the same thing as 3 over, ne 3 over 1, times negative 5 over 3. Reduce by dividing both numbers by 3. You get negative 5 over 1, which is negative 5. Okay, so now we have the x and we have the y. That's the third step. 
Fourth step says check the solution by substituting the solutions from step two and three into the original equation. So I'm going to put these two values into the original equation. So 3x, so again, instead of x, negative 5 over 3 is rx, minus y, which is negative 6, equals 1. Yes, that is true. Okay, I did that in my head. So make sure you actually do it to make sure you did it right. That's negative 6 times x, which is negative 5 over 3 again, plus 3 times negative 6, and that equals to negative 8, and that is also correct. And therefore, we are certain that our solution is correct. Okay, there you go, done. So that's how you solve by substitution, okay? So again, the, first, the, the steps are here, right? S first, solve for one of the variables. You take that and put it into the second equation or the other equation, and then you can solve for one of the variables from that. Then you, once you get an answer, you put it into the other equation to solve for the, the other variable. And once you have both variables solved, then you can plug back into the original equations to check. All right, so there are two questions for you to try. Good luck. Okay, I'll do it quickly here because you know these are supposed to be your practice questions. So here you're supposed to solve for y. I think it'll be easier. I mean, you don't have to solve for y, but it'll be easier. You can solve for x if you wanted to, but you just get yourself in a big trouble by getting fractions out of that. Okay, anyways, so that's what you should get for y. You can then put this into this equation. So 3x plus 2 times negative 4x plus 8 equals 12. You get 3x minus 8x plus 16 equals 12. Negative 5x equals negative 4. By moving 16 to the right, divide both sides by negative 5, you get 4 out of 5 for the x. You can get y by plugging this into the equation we got here. So negative 4 times 4 over 5 plus 8. That gives us negative 16 over 5. You got a fraction, so you need a common denominator. 8 is the same thing as 40 over 5, so negative 16 plus 40 is 24. And you get your y value as 24 over 5. Okay, you can always, always plug this into the original equation to check if this is true. This gives you 16 over 5 plus 24 over 5, which is 40 over 5, and that is 8, correct? You can do the same thing for the other one. 2 times 24 over 5, and that is equal to 12. Well, you get 12 over 5, and you get 48 over 5. That is 60 over 5, and that indeed is 12. Perfect. Okay, similarly here, we can solve for y value here. Um, okay, so here we can solve for y or x. It doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to solve for y here. And um, I mean, if you solve for x, it makes your life a little bit more challenging. If you solve for y, it'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so uh, I mean, the reason why solving for y will be easier is because you can see that's three, that's six. They are multiple of each other. So four and five are not as nice. Okay, um, this will be negative five x plus eighteen. Divide both sides by negative three. You get five over three x minus six. Okay, and that means we can put this in there. So we have 4x minus 6 times 5 over 3x. And this is why, as long as this is a factor of that number, look at this, that's a 3, that's a 6. It actually makes things a lot easier for you. Okay, that's 4x. Negative 6 times positive 5 over 3 is negative 10x. Negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. And 4 minus 10 is negative 6x, minus 36 on both sides, you get negative 18. Divide by negative 6, you get x equal to 3. To solve for y, you plug back in there. So you have y equals 5 over 3 times 3 minus 6. That's 15 over 3 minus, well, you need a common denominator. So there you go. Oh, actually, yeah, what, what, why do I do? Oh my gosh, what am I thinking? 5 over 3 times 3. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's kind of sad. Okay, <laughs> 3 and 3 will cancel. That's 5 minus 6. Oh my gosh, that's a little embarrassing right here. y equals negative 1. Okay, again, you can plug those two numbers in. So 5 times 3 minus 3 times negative 1 is 18. Yes, that's true. 4 times 3 t minus 6 times negative 1, that's also 18, and that's perfect. 
Okay, so that's the uh, algebraic method, solving by substitution. Okay, hopefully you got them right, and uh, you know, hopefully it's not too bad. Okay, again, it's just a skill, right? So you just need to practice a lot to get it right. All right, uh, we have a system here. We have a word problem, actually. He says, part A, create a linear system. Okay, so actually to do these questions, you have to define your variable first. I'm gonna say, let x be the amount of money, amount of money invested at 3.5%. And let y be amount of money invested at 4.5%. Okay, now once we have the we have the variables defined, well, if x is amount of money invested at three point five percent, oh, actually, yes, I should probably read the question first. It says Alexia invested eighteen hundred dollars. Now, part of that is invested at an annual interest rate of three point five percent, and the rest of it is invested at an you know account that has or that gives you four point five percent annual interest rate. After one year, the total interest was $73, okay? Um, so we're gonna create a linear system for this. Well, right away, because I define my X and Y, or our X and Y as the money, so in total, there's $1,800. So my first equation should just be X plus Y equals 1,800. Okay, the second equation comes from the second sentence. It says the total interest was $73. Okay, so the word total tells us that we should add and that equal to $73. Now, $73 is the interest that we earned. Okay, now how do we find out how much interest you, we, we earn? Well, the amount of interest that we earn comes from the amount of money we invest times the interest rate as a decimal. Okay, so 3.5% is the same thing as 0 0.035. Okay, that's that as a decimal. 4.5% is 0 .4, 0 0.045. Okay, so we're investing X dollars at 3.5%, which means the amount of interest we earn would be 0 .0, 0 0.035 X. Okay, plus well, 0 0.045 Y. Okay, because that's the amount of money we invested in the 4.5% account, okay, Y dollars. So. There we go. Now, here's our system, and now we can solve, okay? To solve, again, we can do it by substitution. We can solve for any of the variables here. I'm just gonna solve for x, and therefore x equals moving y to the right, negative y plus 1800. Then I can substitute what we got there into the first equation. We have 0 0.035 times x, negative y plus 1800, plus 0.045y, and that gives us 73 and then can expand, that is negative 0 0.035y plus 0 0.035 times 1800 is 63, and that is zero point, still 0 0.045y equals $73. Combine these two like terms, I get 0.01y, moving 63 to the right, I get 10, divide both sides by 0 0.01, I get $1,000. So that means I, in, or Alexia, um, invest, invests uh, $1,000 in the 4.5% uh, account. That's for the, the uh, Y amount. Uh, for the X, we can then plug this in there. So X equals negative, well, 1,000, that's the Y value, plus 1,800, and therefore X equals $800. Okay, so that's how you solve um, this question right here. Okay. Um, last thing I need to show you is, well, you know, in the previous examples here, these are all whole numbers, whole number or integers, right? Integers. We have integers here, nice and easy to solve. But you look at this, we got fractions, okay? Well, fractions are not as easy to deal with compared to integers, for sure. Uh, they are not horrible, but not as easy. Um, so. Can we do something about that? Well, it turns out that, yes, there is something we can do, okay? It says we can actually multiply or divide equations in a system by a non-zero number. Just like an equation. I mean, at the end of the day, that's an equation, right? If you multiply the left-hand side by two and multiply the right-hand side by two, well, yes, we are changing the, you know, the way it looks, but really it doesn't change or affect the question um, or the equation at all because we are doing the same thing on both sides. 
if we doing the same thing on both sides of the equation, then we are actually not affecting it at all. Okay. So it says equivalent linear system would have the same solution as the original system. Okay. So we can actually get rid of the fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the common denominator. Okay. And the reason why we do that is then we can get rid of the, the well, get rid of the denominator. Okay, so 1 half times 10 gives you 5, so we still have the 5x. Negative 4 over 5 times 10 will give us negative 8y. Okay, negative 8y. Now, it's not just the left-hand side we need to multiply by 10, but also the right-hand side. Negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. Now, you could also get rid of the fractions for the second equation, but I mean, notice this, it's already solved us, solved for us, right? So why would, why would we changing it and then solve for y later, right? Because then at the end, we'll just go back to this form. So I'm actually not going to change the second equation right here. Okay, because y is already solved. So now here's my new system. I am going to substitute y into the first equation, okay? Because it's solved for us already. So we have 5x minus 8 times y, which then I can be written as 1 over 4x minus 3 over 8, and that equals negative 20. And now I can multiply. Negative 8 times 1 quarter is 2x, negative 2x, or minus 2x. Negative 8 times negative 3 over 8 is plus 3. Okay, negative times negative is positive. I can combine like terms here. 5x minus 2x is 3x. I can move the 3 to the right, so that would be negative 23. I guess at the end of the day, we still need to deal with fractions, but it at least it's a little bit less. Okay, hopefully that's easier to deal with than what we had originally. So that's our, our x value. We can then get a y value by putting in the x value into that second equation right here, because we have y solved for us. So that's 1 over 4 times negative 23 over 3 minus 3 over 8. That would be negative 23 over 12 minus 3 over 8. We need a common denominator of 24. So you multiply the first fraction by 2 over 2, and that gives you negative 46. Multiply the second fraction by 3 over 3, you get 9 over 24. Combine them together, you get y equals negative 55 over 24, and that is your answer. Okay, so again, you can um, help yourself by get getting rid of the fractions by multiplying by their low, the, the, the yeah, lowest common denominator. Okay, then you will get rid of the fractions. And then you can proceed like how we did previously. Okay, so there is your last example for you to practice. Good luck. I'll show you in a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite it here because I'm kind of running out of room on the top. I am going to multiply all of these by 12, right, because that's the common denominator, which will then give us 6x minus 4y equals negative 7. Okay, now the second one here, I would actually not multiply by the common denominator. You could if you wanted to actually, but I'm actually not going to do that. I'm actually going to solve for one of the variables first. So I'm going to say uh, that 1 over 8x equals negative 1 over 9y. Okay, so notice how I move 1 over 9y to the right. And now I can solve for x by multiplying both sides by 8. Because 1 out of 8 times 8 is 1. So then this just becomes x equals negative 8 over 9y. Okay? So now I have a new system here. I can substitute my second equation into the first. Okay, so 6 times x, which is negative 8 over 9y minus 4y equals negative 7. Okay, we're dealing with some fractions here. Okay, unfortunately we still have to, but hopefully it's a little bit easier to deal with than what we had, or again, originally. Um, this is 6 times negative 8 over 9. You can div divide this by 3, get a 2. Divide this by 3, get a 3. That's negative 16 over 3. So that's negative 16 over 3y minus, I need a common denominator, so I'm going to make it 12y over 3 equals negative 7. You get negative 28y over 3 equals negative 7. Um, let me double check if I'm doing it right. Don't feel so good. 
<laughs> I don't feel so good. I think that looks fine. Okay, now we need to solve for y. That's negative 28 over 3 times y. So now what I need to do is divide this by negative 28 over 3. Divide this by negative 28 over 3. So I'll do that on the side. Negative 7 divided by negative 28 over 3. That's the same as negative 7 times 3 over negative 28. And again, you can write that as a fraction. So we can, again, reduce negative 28. Divide this by negative 7, you get 1. Divide this by negative 7, you get a 4. So y equals 3 out of 4. Okay, so that's your y value. And to get your x value, you simply plug in this number into this equation. So x equals negative 8 over 9 times 3 over 4. Again, you can reduce. Divide this by 3, divide that by 3, you get a 3. Divide this by 4, you get a 1. Divide that by 4, you get negative 2. So x equals negative 2 out of 3. And that is your solution. Okay, so hopefully not too hard. I mean, it's a little bit tedious, right? I mean, it's quite a bit of work. But it follows this pretty rigorous procedure. So you just need to do a lot of practice. And, you know, once you get the pr procedure under certain steps, then it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay, um, do some practice and uh, let me know if you need some help. Okay, good luck.